As I referenced the staff uh, overall, and Monty leading that charge uh, at the coaching level, um, you know, attack things that we were going to be a bit of a work in progress from, from day one. Um, some opportunity for, for some players, uh, as we saw early on with Watcher and Beecher, um, uh, you know, doing a really good job here in front of the season and, and grabbing hold of the opportunity. Uh, and other guys, in Dan Hyatt's case, uh, really remarkable. Um, you know, great relationship with Monty. I think. Uh, the two of them fed off of that uh, from a trust factor and parlayed it into an outstanding season for us on an individual and, and team level. Um, and several other players have gone in to play elevated roles. Um, they're all to be commended. And uh, you know, but again, I use the word, they're not satisfied. They, they want to go after the next level and, uh, and that starts this week. Can you speak to what this team has to do to be successful against uh, Toronto and the type of uh, matchup they present? Well, offensively, they're, they're a gifted hockey club. Um, you know, they present a lot of challenges down around in that front area. We're going to have to be really sharp there. Uh, you know, we're a pretty good team defensively. We're going to stick to uh, you know, what our principles are. Um, so I expect to be a tight series overall. Um, you know, what is it? Our power play is, is, uh, is really good. Our penalty killing has been pretty consistent throughout the year. Our power play needs to, to, to come back online here. I think that uh, fortunately we scored a goal. The other night to hopefully give the guys a little bit of confidence, and uh, it's going to be just a, a really good challenge at all levels. Um, but, uh, you know, a good hockey club, good bond. If, you, if you've made it to the playoffs, you, you've earned it. They're in the right year, and uh, Toronto will present a really good challenge. Don, how did you feel about um, how Brad Marshan did in his first year as captain, but also balancing that role with not losing his own identity and being himself on the ice? Well, only Brad can answer, you know, honestly, how, how he feels he level. Um, we knew there'd be some challenges and, and probably some ups and downs as it relates to that just because of the, the, the pride that he you know, has in his own performance level. Um, and knowing, also learning from, from two previous captains that, uh, that shouldered that load very well while also being elite players. So there comes the, the challenge for Brad being in that situation for the very first time in his life, albeit as a, a, a part of our leadership group for a number of years. Um, and there's some ups and downs associated with but he you know, handled things you know, coming through the door every day with uh, the absolute right attitude, uh, regardless of whether or not he didn't accomplish individually the things he wanted to accomplish and, and get back to the collective goal. And, uh, and I think you'll see that on, on Saturday. He'll continue to do that. So I think there's a lot of growth in, in, uh, in being that position. Guess what? You don't get to be a captain. You know, because you've been an assistant doesn't mean you know exactly what that role is. It's unique. It's unique to, to wearing that um, you know, in a centennial year for a uh, player of his magnitude, there's a lot. So he did a, he did a really good job of shouldering all those things while continuing to grow and learn. How, how realistic do you think it is to translate uh, the goalie rotation the way he treated the goalies during the regular season into the playoffs, just given how different you know the gravity of, of each game is in the postseason, how like, different of an animal it is in the postseason? I, I guess uh, I'll sum it up in the fact that we're very confident in our goaltending. I, I think it's been a, a strength for a hockey club from, from, from certainly the past two years. That necessarily goes on outside is not necessarily filtered as much inside with what, what people may believe because our goalies know what the plan is, they know what their, their, their strengths are for our hockey club and how much we rely on them. Um, and performance and results will dictate some of this. 
but we know what the plan is going in, and uh, and so do they, and, and we're comfortable with it. Do you want to tell us what the plan is going? In? <laughs> That's not my job. Is there a chance to see Razzo in the first round? Uh, again, he's coming back from uh, an injury that you know the timeline as we described is week to week. I, I still think we're we're you know on that that week to week phase. So the early part of the series is very very unlikely. We're hopeful, but there's no guarantees on that one. That one's going to take some time. He's, uh, he is skating clearly, but uh, you know he has some hurdles to get to. His American review, he was, he was saying that, that was not the year that he wanted with the Marlins that year. What did you guys identify in him that made you think AHL contract maybe even something in the NHL? Yeah, he's had a really interesting path. Uh, you know, he was a prolific scorer at the junior level, and you talk to his coaches there, playing way up in North Bay. Like, he, he, he had attributes that everybody was, he sort of teased me. And, um, probably wasn't as committed off the ice as he needed to be um, to be at the level he is now. And now he understands that. So you saw a progression in Brad when we got him, the work ethic and the application of what he needed to be to continue to be better player. He knew he could be successful. I think at the American level, he'd be very comfortable. Um, but we, we, you know, in communication, just, just kept asking, how much better can you get? And um, and he took it to heart. You know, he would, he would show up here on his own accord, get his place in Providence, be around the guys here, and train effectively, and learn, you know, what his body could handle and, and where he could get to, as opposed to where it was. And I think it started to translate on on ice results. And, and Ryan Mushnell served a lot of credit in working with Braz and, and, and you know, continue on this path. And then he's earned it. Like he flat out earned the opportunity. Uh, our, our scouting staff and our coaches and people just kept acknowledging his continual growth and uh, and kept pushing to say we think he can help us and lo and behold he has it. Player you got at the trade deadline and repeat played the majority of games since you acquired him what have you thought of his performance? Uh, again I think Andrew Schmidt has simulated really well with our group knowing exactly what his strengths are um, where they were going to be applied and, and how we play the game and uh, the coaching staff has been happy with, with where he's gone in you saw the other night that Brandon stepped out of the lineup. He assumes you know, power, penalty killing minutes and uh, shutdown minutes and, and hard nosed minutes that uh, that we appreciate you know, uh, as part of our group. And uh, uh, kudos to our scouting staff for realizing that it's not just a, a, you know, a one year flip when he's in and out of the lineup in a, in a previous environment uh, coming in and, and, uh, and earning the opportunity to continue to, to grow within our own lineup more minutes, more responsibility. And hopefully that continues to trend. Don, I've got a a broad question about establishing inside ice and that kind of things over the arc of your career as, as player, player development, manager, harder to establish it today than it was you know, back in the late 80s, more significant to get it today in terms of playoff hockey? That's a really good question. I, I, you, you, I think the, the big body guys, you know, either Cam or Kevin Stevens are guys that occupied that pretty well. I would say there's, there's probably a less Cross-checking and, and stuff that you'll get away with, uh, at, you know, this day and age, uh, you know, it's still it's still there. But I, I think the, the the league has more movement in the offensive zone uh, to incorporate offense uh, as a five-man unit. And guys will come in and out of that space as opposed to just parking themselves there and working the back of the net. And such I just think there's so much more movement. Uh, adaptation of, of systems that, that teams play also probably uh, predicate more movement. Um, you know, like every different lineup, there's D that are you know, sometimes looking like forwards at times and, and going into space and such. Um, <coughs> I think the movement part of it is, is certainly adapted at the big body level. Um, but inside ice is, is earned. And uh, it gets tighter and tighter as the, as the playoffs go on. And did you talk about it as much in the league about it, about it now? Because it's, it's so much of now that is the old. Oh, it was it was it was absolutely talked about the establishment in terms of knowing that you were going up against guys that, that you know, you're just going to have to win that battle. That ice has to be yours, and, and I don't think that's ever changed. You know, it still comes down to one-on-one -on -one battles and confrontational hockey. In the playoffs, you realize that the first round in particular, you know, physicality probably triples, and uh, ice is earned. Losing three out of the last four to close out the regular season. Just what, what do you make of the, the state of this team in general entering the playoffs? Uh, 
Um, yeah, obviously we didn't play to, to our standard in the last two games in particular. Um, you know, except for the third period against Ottawa where our guys felt that there was a level of desperation there that we, could, we should be trying to win the, you know, win the division. Um, and we're disappointed about that. that. That was what our intention was. You know, we clearly played that way against Pittsburgh. And, you know, long Jones, we didn't uh, do as good a job against Washington and Ottawa. We had that, you know, really good segments against quality teams. You know, leading up to that, we feel confident that we play to our standard that, uh, that we're going to be a tough out. Tom Gregor has had two breakout seasons here back to back with the playoff numbers still haven't kind of followed. What do you think he has to do to kind of finally break through and be a game breaker here in the postseason? Yeah, most of the time we talk about with, with Trent is, is play with pace and emotion. Uh, the rest of the game seems to follow suit. Um, you know, the, the playoffs should, should lend to that. Um, if he can, you know, if he can channel those energies and, uh, and get to the interior races, as, as Kevin was just talking about, I think it's an area that. Uh, you know, he himself can, can do a, a better job of now. He has more experience, has gone through those things, and uh, you know, we're excited about the progression that, that, that you know Trent has shown the last two seasons. Uh, and hopefully, that translates to uh, start second. John, welcome into the decision to just have 12 forwards here today. And do you anticipate someone else coming back up before second? Yeah, the regular season doesn't end until tonight, so roster will completely open up on Friday. Just so you can bring up. Two or three bodies. Uh, right now, we're slated to bring up just two two players for tomorrow's match. You mentioned the roster churn this year. Um, there's Pate who's never played in a playoff game, but there's also a good handful of players that did get in the playoffs last year. Do you think that's been a factor in terms of overall success, motivation, hunger? It could be in all those uh, areas. Uh, you know, Kevin Schechter up on Stanley Cup hasn't played in the playoffs for a couple of years. He's he's really excited. It's one of the reasons why he came to Boston this year to be part of it. Um, you know, every guy's own situation is somewhat unique. I, I have utmost confidence our guys will not be you know, in any way, shape, or form nervous about playing and, and such. They're going to be ready and, and excited about, about the challenge in front of them. Um, and uh, we have lots of leadership to, to be able to, to make sure that that message is, is delivered in this year. With, with the um, Coyle and Zaka elevating to more than you expected out of them, what you expected or uh, it's it's what we hope's the wrong word because I think that uh, Charlie Coyle has been a little bit uh, cast in the wrong light at times. You know, when we were a, a deepest team we were last year, it was an incredible luxury to say, okay, Charlie Coyle's the third line center, but he clearly stepped in at times and was a, a one or a two. He didn't ever consider himself just a third line center. He's having to be playing on a team that, that you know, that's where he was you know, best utilized. And, uh, but his ice time is really not that much different. Zach is, is considerably different. And so is, is uh, Gordon Geek. Uh, they're going, you know, he's up probably three and a half minutes, you know, if not four minutes from the previous season. Um, and those are not easy minutes. So our guys have responded, as I referenced early on, against a lot of turnover, our, our team performance results, and individually. Has been really good, and the guys should be proud of that. I think those guys, in particular, those two players, they wanted that. It's a lot of what, what Pal Saka talked about coming to Boston last year. It was a, a good indoctrination to play with these deep players that Bergeron and Krejci have that have a lot of success and learn from them and be a sponge. He's talked about that, and you know, it's great. It translated into his own individual success this year, and uh, even better for the team. What, what did you think uh, of uh, Lindholm and McAvoy? As a pairing together, got used uh, quite a bit down the stretch here. Uh, yeah, I mean, the coaches feel comfortable with a bunch of different pairing sets. I think they were experimenting in, in some situations to, to play in matchup roles, and, and you know, clearly they're going to occupy anywhere, you know, in a 60 minute game, anywhere from 25 to you know, 26 minutes. Um, and that's the lockdown mentality. But if you're going to spread it around and, and what the opponents present, then you're able to go away from it. Obviously, Lindholm and Carlo played an awful lot together. Grizzly and Mac played a lot together. So we're able to mix and match effectively. And you just never know. I mean, we're, we're all hoping for, for complete health throughout the playoffs, but it's unlikely. So we may face with some of those challenges. And uh, But they're comfortable um, you know, playing against in high leverage situations against you know, events the best players and, and, and hopefully tilt the ice in our favor. On that note, is there a forward a legit option? Or is that wait and see how this weekend? Yeah, that's a wait and see. I mean, you know, Derek's made great strides, and uh, you know, a little bit surprisingly, to tell you the truth, he was you know, on an operating table not too long ago for two different 
situations. So um, good on him, good on the training staff. We still have a, a undetermined timeline in terms of how he's going to continue to progress. Uh, but it's a good, it's certainly a, a positive sign that he's he's made the progress that he has. Um, and credit to Derek, to tell you the truth, because he could have just you know arguably shut things down completely. Um, but you know he, he wants to play. He's a gamer, and wants to play, and he wants to see whether or not the healing process can continue. And he's a becomes a factor at some point in time in terms of that. John, I don't know what the protocol is these days, but in terms of GM openings, coach openings, have you been approached at all on any of your personnel about any of the openings? Uh, no, we went through that last year with some of our guys. At this point in time, I have not been, nobody's asked for formal permission. What's your general rule of thumb on that in terms of the manager? Are you okay with yeah, again, the league might you know, protocol is you have to request formal permission before you, you, know, you have any type of conversation. If you have a general interest, if you're going to have a, an interview process of any kind, then you have to you have to seek permission in a time frame. Yeah, but you're okay with those guys. You you would be okay with your guys interviewing each other. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, yes. The bottom line is our organization would support anybody that has an opportunity to uh, to move up um, in a job that they. Mason's had a good year, the first year you know, really pro. He's been in a lot of games in the National Hockey League. He's done a good job. And there's some areas in his game we want to continue to, to see growth. He's back down playing in, uh, in every different situation minutes. And um, he'll be back up tomorrow to practice, I believe. He'll talk to Monty and confirm. He's one of the guys we discussed and, and you guys have asked about. Um, to continue to integrate him into this environment, I think, is really important. Um, and to be around and absorb that, albeit not playing for a significant period of time and being rusty would be, you know, wouldn't be the greatest thing for him, him either. Um, individually, uh, offensively gifted player, uh, sees the game offensively, needs to respect the game a little bit more from the standpoint of defense and taking away time and space and being as hard on, you know, on, on the puck recovery side of things. But his exits and, and his offensive blue line stuff, it's, it's really hard to teach, you know, at that size. So we're really excited about his progression. Um, hasn't even played the position for that long. Um, and he comes into a brand new system. Uh, but he's, he's done a good job overall, and we're, we're excited about his growth and potential moving forward. And how, do you see the, um, how do you see the goaltending situation being done in the playoffs? you see one guy riding it out, or do you see a platoon back and forth like you've been doing all season, or you don't know? Really, my, my, my answer hasn't changed from my previous one. Um, we're very comfortable with both goaltenders. They know the plan as uh, to what we're going to do, and our team is very comfortable with both centers. So performance and results may change you know, what our approach looks like, but we know what the plan is going to be. Thanks, Tom. Thank you.